Welcome to New York's number two sports show. And unfortunately, we do have some Ranger injury news. And after last night's game, there was concern about Adam Fox and Philip Heedle, and both of them will be out. So Adam Fox has been placed on long-term IR, meaning that he will be out at least 10 games and 24 days. So he, you know, he'll be out for the rest of November at the very least. And if that's all it is, that's a win as far as the information we know. It's been out there that they thought that, you know, again, nothing official, of course, but some reputable sources saying that maybe it was going to be a two to four week injury. So that's the hope at this point that it is nothing, you know, that he's back maybe sometime in December, something of that sort. But that will be a major loss for this team. And, you know, you think about, Let's say Igor Assad, and well, Igor is part of this injury news as well, to a lesser extent. But you know, losing Adam Fox, you may not find a more like as well as Artemi Panarin's been playing. You know, to lose Adam Fox, uh, the, the amount of minutes that he logs, power play, penalty kill, that's a really tough loss. And the Rangers have been very fortunate since he became a Ranger. Uh, this is now his fifth season. Um, yeah, he has really uh, been very healthy. Only missed a few games uh, a few seasons ago. A couple, I guess, I think a couple, yeah, uh, the 2022 season. Might have missed like three games. So he's been healthy. It was a, a knee-on-knee hit from Sebastian Ajo. And, you know, look, it might have been accidental. But the fact of the matter is, I'm sure that, you know, Next Rangers Hurricanes game will be very interesting. Let's just put it that way. And, you know, this is a big loss for the Rangers who are off to a hot start. So let's just, I guess we'll keep it with the defense. And with Fox, this enables, so now his $9.5 million cap hit is off the books for as long as he's on LTIR. So that gives the Rangers some cap relief, which they needed. And which will enable them to make some moves. So let's just keep it with the defense. They are calling up Connor Mackey, uh, which is interesting because I thought, and not that I have a problem with it at all, I think Mackey's off to a solid start with Hartford. You know, you would have thought that Ben Harper would have been the one that kind of would have had the first crack at it, but it's going to be Mackey. And I guess the interesting thing will be this. I'm, I'm to assume that he'll be the healthy scratch and Zach Jones will come in, but like, let's talk about the defense for a second. I think Miller Truba stays. No reason to break them up. And what I would do is probably go lingering with Schneider. Now, you know, I just want to avoid the Jones-Schneider pair. We saw what happened against Columbus, second game of the season when Ryan Lindgren was out, and it wasn't good. It was really, uh, really bad. And so Zach Jones is probably going to have to play on his right side, which is his offside. But I think that him and Gustafson did play a game together in the preseason. So that's what I would do. And with and if, uh, in the case of Mackey, same sort of thing. So in my scenario, that's putting a lot of trust into Braden Schneider. And I don't feel great about it, but you don't really have many other options. And so I would rather try to balance things out uh, and at least keep Gustafson on that third pair. I think that's what they'll – I would. that's the logical move. I just don't see how you can go back to that young pair. Um, if it worked, great. Right. I mean, in terms of having Gustafson with Lindgren, there's the positive to that being like you have that offensive defensive complement. Right. And so. We'll see what happens. And again, I would think Connor Mackey will be the healthy scratch. Uh, Zach Jones needs to get in the lineup. And I, I would assume that Mackey comes in as your seventh defenseman, but don't be surprised if if he, you know, comes into play, certainly considering how long Fox will be out for. So that's the defense. And of course, Gustafson will take over on that power play one unit and Miller on power play two. It, it is kind of funny in thinking about that, how Jacob Truba, who was like a staple on the second power play unit, like isn't even really close to that now, as it should be. And I think it's probably, you know, it's been good for him. He, he's had a nice season to start. Now let's talk about Philip Hedl. Philip Hedl, who collided with Jesper Fast, I think that's where the injury came from. And it sounds like it's a concussion, which I'm not surprised. Some people thought maybe it was a hand or wrist, and there's been no confirmation. But I think it's a concussion, which he's had 
This is like the third or fourth concussion he's had like in the last few years. Uh, and so he goes on IR. So now he is. So what that means is his cap is still on the books, but now he's not on like the active roster, so to speak. So Heedle will be out for at least seven days. And I suspect it might be a little bit more than that. You know, I, I think Heedle might be out for a little bit. I uh, don't think it'll be like, I don't think it will be long term. Uh, hence the reason why he wasn't put on long-term IR. But I think he'll be out for, for a little bit here. Rangers schedule, they catch a little bit of a break where this week there's games, but the next week there's a big lull. between. You know, they, they play on November 12th and then don't play again until November 18th. So that could prove beneficial here. They might catch a break in that sense. And the Rangers call up Johnny Brodzinski, which makes that makes total sense. A, had a good camp. If not for Will Cooley really impressing, you would have made the team. And he's been great, you know, in Hartford so far. He's, you know, the number, you know, obviously the offensive numbers aren't going to translate to the NHL, but that is one that makes sense. Another news bit is that Barkley Goodrow will not be playing tomorrow night as uh as his wife is giving birth. Uh and so he will be with her. And so what that means is that Brodzinski and Pitlick will be in. Now, when Goodrow is back, uh, that'll be interesting to see um, what they decide there. It'll probably be between Brodzinski and Pitlick. But for now, would expect Brodzinski to slot right into that third-line center role in between uh, Cooley and Wheeler. That would make sense. And then Pitlick goes in the fourth line. Uh, VZ moves over to the left side. That's what they'll do there. But again, once Goodrow is back in there, it'll, it'll cause some, some interesting decisions. But, you know, losing Heedle, not good either. Because and, and what I should also mention is that Trocek will be elevated to that second line with Panarin and Lafreniere. Um, you know, it's too bad. Heedle, I, I feel like it was you know, an up and down start. No goals, but, you know, it's not like it's been all bad for him. A little streaky. Again, I, I think that, Overall, I'd call it underwhelming, but also, like, definitely like him on that line with Panarin, you know? So, th that loss will be felt for sure, just in the fact that, hey, Brodzinski is your third-line center, for example, or even if it were Goodrow, it's just different. Uh, you know, I would say there's a strength in the fact that you have Trocek as your third-line center, uh, and now it takes a bit of a hit. So, Heedle goes on IR. He'll be out at least seven days, probably more. And then goalies, Igor Shesterkin, who we saw had a little bit of a collision, and I, I think the second period, and was down, but did finish the game, was okay, and they're saying he's banged up. So he is not going on IR, but they call up Louis Domingue. So tomorrow night, Jonathan Quick gets the start, which I kind of thought was going to happen anyway, but now Domingue's the backup, and so will this cause Igor to miss some time? Maybe a little bit, but I think... Um, you don't love to see it, but the timing of it, I think, is okay. And so you are going to have uh, Igor as technically going down as a healthy scratch. Um, so does he will be a scratch. The only healthy scratch, because obviously Goodrow won't be with the team tomorrow, will either be Jones or Mackey, probably Mackey, who will be the only one that's truly healthy and fully available, not playing. So... That could lead to some more Jonathan Quick starts. I don't think it'll get to the point where Deming will be in there. Obviously, we know he has NHL experience, so if it had to be, it is. Uh, but I think the fact that Igor finished out the game and looked good doing so, I, I think that you could be, you know, feeling okay about that one. Big news here is, is Adam Fox. That hurts. And look, let's be honest, we don't know how long he's going to be out. We just don't. Um, but we do know that it's probably going to go through at least the end of the month. And if that's all it is, take that as a win. Look, the Rangers have built up a very nice beginning. This will be a really good test, though. And I'm hoping that with Peter Laviolette's system and then buying into the system and playing a very strong, structured defensive style, that that can lead them to victory. And I don't feel good. Look, scoring goals is going to be difficult. Let's just say it. You know it's going to be. I mean, and the power play takes a hit. Look, there's still great personnel on there. And Gustafson is certainly no slouch. But it's just a different ball game. I mean, Adam Fox uh, is such a key to the success of that number one unit. So, 
very unfortunate. Hopefully we look back on this and, you know, it isn't something that's completely disruptive. You know, I think about the Yankees with, when Aaron Judge went down, which was a two-month in, you know, that really sunk them in a big, big way. And they were doing well at the time. It's different. This is earlier in the Rangers season. You're hoping it's not as long as that. But the point, the point I'm trying to make is, um, look, these things can have a very negative effect. But it's next man up. And again, like I like what I've seen from the team to think that they won't completely fold in any way and in terms of goal prevention should still be all right. But look, as much as we praise Adam Fox for his offensive game, you know, you're putting Zach Jones in the lineup or Connor Mackey and it's going to hurt. And the transition game is completely crushed. I mean, in terms of the defense getting the puck to the forwards without Adam Fox is going to be a bit problematic. And it's too bad because really through through, through 10 games, things were going about as, as well as they could have uh, from health and just, you know, winning games and the overall vibe of the team was good. So, you know, wish Adam Fox and Philip Hedelin and also Igor Shesterkin well in their recovery. But again, Fox goes to LTIR, which gives some cap relief to the point where they have called up Rodzinski, Mackey, Deming. Philip Hedl, his cap remains. He goes on IR, so he'll be on the shelf for a bit. And then he goes to Cirque and banged up. Hopefully that's something too serious. So we'll see what happens as the Rangers will head to Minnesota a little bit shorthanded.